So for example number six, what they've done is they've given us a table and in five minute intervals they've measured how many gallons, which is kind of the rate at which it pumps. So I have at zero minutes, they had 58. At five minutes, they had 60. And this is, this is gallons per minute. So this is the rate that it pumps at. And it's gallons per minute. And then at 10 minutes, uh, it had 65. Then at 15 minutes, it had 64. And then at 20 minutes, and you might be saying, well, Mr. Adams, can't we just take the average? Well, it depends on what, what we want to figure out. There's a lot of things that could go into how this flow rate or rate of change can vary. So the first step is just to take a measurement every five minutes. All right. Now I'm not going to write all of them down. It's in your example. Actually, you know what? Let's do it. Let's write them all down. I know. Isn't that a lot? <laughs> so anyways, we're almost done. Nope, no more <laughs> Alright. So then we have fifty-five, uh, fifty-nine, sixty, sixty. Uh, and then 63, oops, 63, you have an eraser. and then 63, I know, but it, it won't fit in that little, oh, can you change the size of it? I can, but can we're just going to do it this way. I'm recording right now, by the way. Alright. Can you scroll up? I can't scroll up. This is in your book, too. Okay, so now... Let me just reread this for the video because I read it before I hit record. It says a pump connected to a generator operates at a varying rate depending on how much power is being drawn from the generator. That's why the, it varies. Okay. So then the rate, which is in gallons per minute in which the pump operates, is recorded in five-minute intervals. That's what I wrote down in the table for one hour. How many gallons were pumped during that hour? So, that, so now that's a good question. Like how many gallons were pumped in that hour? Well, now, normally, if we knew, like, normally we have, like, a mathematical model that represents the rate, right? And remember that rate is the gallon per minute. And so if I were to graph that, uh, it would just be gallons per minute. And so do we know what that function is? No. But that's the rate in which the gas is pumped. So then if I wanted to know how much was pumped, how much gas was pumped, which is what they're asking us, how would, it, how would I use calculus to determine that? I would just say, and I'm going to put GP for gas pumped, should equal this, right? So a long time ago, we talked about Riemann sums and various ways that we can calculate. By the way, what is that graphically? That's the area under the curve. So if I were to graph this, if I were to graph this information, like in an xy plane, I'd have all these points, and I could draw a mathematical model and calculate the area under the curve, and the area under the curve would represent how much gas was pumped in gallons. Does that make sense to you guys? Okay, so just knowing that doesn't mean I should graph it. Uh, what I'm looking for is the mathematical value. So we can because this is an interval of time, delta t, which is equal to 5 every time, it's an equal space. All right. And so remember using the one approach that we had to solve this mathematically, and we've, we've gone through quite a few of these, is that we said 
that this could be approximated to, and this is the, based on the fundamental theorem, And this is from, or not fundamental theorem, this is from based on the trapezoidal rule. Okay. And we should know what the trapezoidal rule is by now. If you don't know what it is, look it up in your book. But basically, we're going from 0 to 60, A to B. And then we have the constant multiplier. There's the formula at the beginning. And then we just take the sum of these things. And it's not really equal, it's approximately this. And in fact, let me scroll this down so I have a little more room. So this should come down a little bit. And this should come down. And then so if you recall, you take the first value, the first y value. So I'm going to get all these values from the table way up here. The first one is by itself, and then you multiply each one by 2. So this would be like plus 2 times 60 plus 2 times um, 65. And I can't see everything on the screen, so what's the next number? 2 times 64 plus 2 times, what's the next number? 58 plus 2 times... 57 plus 2 times 55. And we're going a little bit beyond what the book says. Next one. Next one. Next one. And then another 60, isn't it? And then 63, 63. And then remember on the last one, we don't put the 63. And that's, or I mean, we don't put the 2, is what I meant. All right? And so this is the trapezoidal rule. Basically, what we're doing is we're finding the area, which is 1 half times um, the sum of the two bases, base 1 plus base 2. But in reality, it's like 1 half times um, uh, f of x sub. 1 plus f of x sub 2. And I'm not going to redo the whole trapezoidal rule. And then when we add all those sums up, you get this 1 over, and then you take and divide by the total number of sums. So this is the formula. Look it up in the book if you want to. You should know it by now. So now that we've got this, uh, mathematically, if we add all that stuff up, it should approximate the value of the area under the curve. And so if we go through and, and crank through all the math, we get 3, 5, 8, 2, 0. 0.5. Does that make sense? And so we could say that's about how many gallons it is. Now, what would be a good common sense check on that? In 60, minute, in 60 minutes, how many things did we measure? Well, 60 divided by 5 is 12. That's where this 12 comes from right up here. Right? We actually have 13 sets of numbers, but we're, when we're measuring, it's like 12 intervals. right? Or we could think of it as 13 intervals, however you want to look at it. But basically, our average was around 60 or close to 60. Uh, probably closer to 58. So what would 12 times 58 be? 636. Yeah. Actually, i got to take that back. The rate is per minute, so it would be like 58 times 60. Right? So what would that be? 
So the, the average of the rates must be around closer to 59. But do you guys see how we could check the order of magnitude by doing that? I kind of said it wrong, but does that make sense? Let me write it on the board so it makes sense. What we do is we have an average. If I were to, if, to, to, to make sure that my common sense, if I take all these rates, all right, and I average them up, it must be <coughs> close to <coughs> about 59 gallons per minute. And so how long do we do it for? 60 minutes. So uh, what's 59 times 60? I can actually do it. It's 3,600 minus 60, 3,540. 6 times 50 is 3,000. What's it 9 times 60? I thought it was an 8 times 60. 60 times 60. Is that what it was on the calculator? Yeah. I actually did that one like 60. I did that like that. Wasn't it 58? Just that wasn't it. I thought you said 58. I don't get the same. Me too. Yeah, well, 58 wasn't high enough. Well, okay, so let, let's answer some of these questions because they're good questions. I want to leave them on the video because somebody will probably ask the same questions next year. Um, what your question was? The significance of those numbers. Okay, what is the average? We're, we're trying to figure out how many gallons were pumped. So this is the average gallons per minute, right? Where do and, and I'm just thinking. I don't know if that's the exact average, but I look at the numbers. And I got some numbers, like the lowest number I have is like 58. The highest number I have is 63. Somewhere in the middle is the average. The actual average is 59.769. Okay, so 59. <laughs> and so that's the average. Okay, actually the lowest number was 55, right? So that's the average. And how long do we pump it for? 60 minutes. So if I take this, and I multiply it by 60 minutes, I'm going to get myself a common sense check. All right? Because I could have hit something wrong on the calculator. Oh, wait, I don't use a calculator. But if I were to use a calculator, I may have made a mistake and hit the wrong button, and I could have gotten 35,000 or 30 or 350 or something like that. So we always want to do like a common sense check at the end of our answer to see if it's right. We don't want to blindly just write down whatever it is. So you got to get in the habit of double checking, uh, doing math two or three different ways, and, and kind of guessing um, what your answer is. Okay? Any questions? Yeah.